Savior is born for us. The long-awaited expectation of hope, that message spoken by the prophets, God in person, God's word made flesh. Together with the angels, let us make our jubilant praise for this joyous occasion as we wholeheartedly praise our God with the hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, with great joy in our hearts, we are here to celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. We are grateful to God our Father for sending us His Son Jesus. Jesus is God's present to all of us, His gift to the world, the Saviour who has come to lead us to eternal life. For all the times when we have taken this gift for granted, when we have not treasured Jesus in our lives. Let us now acknowledge those moments and all our sins as well and ask God for pardon and mercy. 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news, who heralds peace, brings happiness, proclaims salvation, and tells Zion, Your God is King. Listen. Your watchmen raise their voices. They shout for joy together, for they see the Lord face to face as he returns to Zion. Break into shouts of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord is consoling his people, redeeming Jerusalem. The Lord bears his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. At various times in the past and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in our own time, the last days, He has spoken to us through His Son, the Son that He has appointed to inherit everything and through whom He made everything there is. He is the radiant light of God's glory and the perfect copy of His nature, sustaining the universe by His powerful command. And now that He has destroyed the defilement of sin, He has gone to take His place in heaven at the right hand of the Divine Majesty. So, He is now as far above the angels as the title which He has inherited is higher than their own name. God has never said to any angel, You are my son, today I have become your father, or I will be a father to him and he a son to me. Again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being but through Him. All that came to be had life in Him, and that life was the light of men. A light that shines in the dark. A light that darkness could not overpower. A man came sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, 
only a witness to speak for the light. The Word was the true light that enlightens all men, and He was coming into the world. He was in the world that had its being through Him, and the world did not know Him. He came to His own domain, and His own people did not accept Him. But to all who did accept Him, He gave power to become children of God. To all who believe in the name of him who was born not out of human stock or urge of the flesh or will of man, but of God himself. The word was made flesh. He lived among us and we saw his glory, the glory that is his as the only son of the father, full of grace and truth. John appears as his witness. He proclaims, This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he existed before me. Indeed, from his fullness we have, all of us, received, yes, grace in return for grace. Since through the law, since though the law was given through Moses, grace and truth have come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is the only Son who is nearest to the Father's heart who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, a very good morning to you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. And to all our online viewers, also, and all present here, also, a very Merry Christmas to one and all. Yes, finally, we are celebrating the day of our Lord's Nativity. We read from the Gospel according to John, the very first chapter and the very first verses of this Gospel. It tells us about the true origin of this baby that we are celebrating. His origin is in God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Word of God made flesh. It is with joy and gladness that we remember again today, 2,000 years later, His most blessed birth. The birth of Jesus was the birth of a great light in the darkness that is our human existence. Many of us have come to know God only because of Jesus. He is the light because He casts out the darkness of ignorance from our hearts, ignorance of God. Jesus reveals the Father to us, and in revealing the Father to us, he enables each and every one of us to enter into a deep and intimate relationship with God. So the darkness that is dispelled with the birth of Jesus, it is that darkness of ignorance, of having no knowledge of God and no possibility of living a life of grace and truth. And that is why we are told in today's Gospel that though the law was given through Moses, yes, through Moses we know what is right and what is wrong, but it is through Christ that grace and truth have come. In other words, the ability to do that which is right and the ability to enter into a deep relationship with God. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, the classic question that we were all once asked when we were children, why did God make you? Why did God create us? And the answer is to know Him, to love Him, and to serve Him. That is the purpose of our human existence, to know God, to love Him, and to serve Him. And serving Him means serving one another because God lives in each one of us. So today, truly, when we say that knowledge of God comes through Jesus Christ. It is the first step 
to being able to fulfill our existence as a human being. And that is the first step of being someone who enjoys the gift of salvation. Today we cry out, the Savior is born, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He saves us from being alienated from God and from one another. In Him and through Him, all men and women can live a life of grace and truth. And for that, we truly are grateful and we celebrate this Eucharist with thanksgiving. This year, our churches here in Kuala Lumpur, Archdiocese, are empty because of fears of spreading the coronavirus. And because of that, we have decided that it is, the church has decided that it is safer for all our faithful to celebrate Christmas at home and not here in church. Now some of us may be sad that we are not able to receive the Holy Eucharist today. Some of us sad that we can't sing carols together in church. Maybe we just have to listen to a recording of carols or just listen uh, to it online. But dear brothers and sisters, let our spirit of joy not be dampened because of this. Let us look at it in a positive way and see how we can still have that spirit of Christmas. Now I'd like to invite all of us to think about the sick and the elderly, the homebound especially. More often than not, when we come to church to celebrate Christmas, they are left at home alone. This year, that's not going to happen because nobody can come to church. And so this Christmas, rather than looking at it from a point of view of, oh, what a pity that we have no opportunity to come to Mass, let's think of something positive and make it a beautiful Christmas for those who would usually not have a, point, a chance to come to Mass anyway. And let us, by their bedsides, sing the Christmas carols for them. Let us accompany them and give our full attention to them. And remember that they are the baby Jesus in the crib. That crib may be a hospital bed. And they may be there lying helpless. That person might be that baby Jesus for me this year. Let us not forget that. Let us treasure them. Just as we treasure infants that are born just as we treasure our Lord, these lowly ones who in the eyes of society have no more value because they are not contributing anymore and are only dependents. Christmas this year is for them. And in fact, every year, Christmas should always be not for ourselves, but for others. So we do not know what surprises more will come our way. Life is full of surprises. One small virus has wreaked havoc in our world. One tiny thing has changed so much of our life here on earth. But I would like us also to remember that tiny baby Jesus, that little infant who also changed the world. And do you think that the coronavirus is greater than him? No, Christmas lives on because Christmas happens in your heart and in your homes and in your families. Where two or three are gathered in my name, our Lord Jesus says, there I am in their midst. And let us not forget, the family is the domestic church. So once again, I would like to wish all of us here a most blessed, a most holy, a most happy and joyful Christmas. In spite of everything, let us rejoice and let us really give thanks to God. 
for all the blessings we have received, especially for the blessing of life. And as the great act of thanksgiving, let us receive Christ today spiritually, in spiritual communion, as we participate in this online Mass and know that Christ truly lives in us. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things invisible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day, when the goodness and kindness of God our Saviour have appeared, let us, dear brothers and sisters, humbly pour forth to Him our prayers, trusting not in our own good works, but in His mercy. For our Holy Father, bishops, priests, and religious, that they who guide God's people be faithful heralds of the good news of salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For leaders of all nations, that they be, be guided by wisdom and understanding when carrying out their responsibilities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us, that we may be filled with Christmas peace and joy, remembering all our loved ones near and far. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all our young, that they may hear the message of peace and spread the joy of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for any other intentions that may be in the secret of our hearts, let us now lift up all of these to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, O Lord our God, that the Virgin Mary, who merited to bear God and man in her chaste womb, may commend the prayers of your faithful in your sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept and sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all Holy Church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day, when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight, and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for in the mystery of the word made flesh a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him god made visible we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are clear indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Julian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, a spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, for the, kingdom the power, power and the glory are, are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say, say the, the word, word and, and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my 
soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Saviour of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of His Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of His Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness He gives, and make you heralds of His Gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of His peace and favour, and make you share us with the Church in Heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.